How the twelve apostles died. They were flayed with knives, boiled in oil, crucified upside down for their faith in Jesus Christ. This is how the apostles died. The first Matthew among the apostles, James the son of Zebedee, brother to John the Beloved, was killed by King Herod around AD 44. Herod sought to please his subjects, the Jews, and when he found that he had an interest in preventing the spread of Christianity, he realized persecuting Christians would win him the people's favor. James was beheaded in Jerusalem by the sword. Simon Peter, considered the leader of the apostles, cheated death several times. One particular instance was shortly after James was beheaded, Herod having locked him up as his next victim, an angel of the Lord performed a spectacular prison break for him after the church offered prayers. He later died in Matthias killed by Emperor Nero around AD 64-68. He was crucified upside down at his request as he considered himself unworthy to die in the same manner his Lord Jesus Christ had died. Andrew, the brother to Simon Peter, was the first disciple of Jesus according to the Gospel of John. He and Philip were disciples of John the Baptist and followed Jesus after John testified of him being the Messiah. He was martyred by crucifixion in the Greek city of Petras around 60 AD and like his brother Peter after him, did not consider himself worthy to be crucified on a T-shaped cross, so was therefore crucified on an X-shaped cross. While on his cross, he called the crowd to him and preached to them about Jesus Christ for two days before giving up the ghost. John, the beloved of Jesus Christ, was persecuted and buried in oil, but miraculously he came out unharmed. After being passed through many other gruesome tortures for death in vain, he was finally exiled to the island of Patmos and left for dead. It was there he encountered the Lord Jesus and documented the book of Revelations. He later made it back to Ephesus on a missionary trip where he died a natural death around AD 98 and was about 80 years of age. He is the only apostle to not have been martyred. Around AD 72, Thomas Didymus was on a missionary work in India where he helped establish many churches in the region. After gaining so much influence in the region to the point of working directly with the king of India, he was killed with a spear for his faith in Jesus Christ. Philip, like Andrew, was a disciple of John the Baptist and followed Jesus shortly after John's testimony about Jesus being the Messiah. He was martyred by having iron hooks impaled into his ankles and hung upside down. He preached on while hanging and led multitudes to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ till his last breath. Bartholomew, also known as Nathaniel, suffered perhaps one of the most gruesome of deaths for his faith in Jesus Christ. While pursuing his missionary work in Asia Minor around India, he was flayed with knives, that is, skinned like an animal. Human flaying was practiced throughout history with references as recent as the 14th century. It certainly was a gruesome method of making a statement or passing a warning to the population. The skin of criminals or leaders of conquered villages were often hung on public display to spread terror. Therefore, Bartholomew's flame was serving to pass a message of terror to the people of Asia Minor and discourage them from opening their hearts to the message of the apostles. Matthew, the tax collector, like the other apostles, moved the earth as a missionary sharing the gospel. He traveled to Africa and preached in Ethiopia where he was arrested. Around AD 60-65, he was staked to the ground and then was later beheaded. James, brother to Thaddeus, often confused with James the Just, the half-brother of Jesus Christ. James the Just, though not one of the founding apostles, was the leader of the Christian community in Jerusalem. He was thrown off the pinnacle of the temple after he refused to deny his faith in Jesus Christ and when he didn't die after the fall, they beat him to death with clubs. 
James, the brother of Tadius, was a missionary in Egypt, where he was crucified in the city of Ostrakine and sawed into pieces in AD 62 for his faith in Christ Jesus. Tadius, the brother of James, son of Alphaeus, who was also called Jude, went on to preach as a missionary in Syria, then Persia, alongside Simon the Zealot. There, the priest of the gods of the land asked him to death after his preaching and demonstration of the power in the name of Jesus Christ ridiculed their gods in the land. Simon the Zealot preached in Persia alongside Thaddeus around AD 67. He met the same fate as his brother in the faith Jude, chopped to death with an axe for not submitting to the gods of Persia. Matthias, the apostle who was chosen to replace Judas Iscariot, he was stoned and then beheaded at the end of the first century. That's it for the official twelve apostles of Jesus Christ who had directly experienced his ministry on earth. But because you've watched this far, we have two extras for you. Judas Iscariot might not be considered an apostle in the proper sense of the word, someone released on a mission as he died well before Jesus' resurrection and his handing down of the Great Commission. However, he was there at the beginning as one of the two of disciples, that is, students of Jesus Christ. After he betrayed Jesus Christ with 30 pieces of silver, out of guilt he hung himself and died, not a matter of cause. Paul, generally considered to be the greatest of all the apostles, not by his direct contact with Jesus' ministry on earth, but by his unequaled service and sacrifice for the early church. Having authored three quarters of the New Testament and spent the latter part of his life preaching the gospel while in a prison cell in Rome, like Peter, he was killed by Emperor Nero, beheaded sometime around AD 64-68. to this is the closest account we have of the apostles dead, and not just them, the believers of the first century church suffered and paid a huge price for their faith in Christ Jesus. Many were stoned, many met unspeakable things done to them. But their testimony is a big challenge to the 21st century believer. Before even talking about laying down one's life, can you sacrifice everything you have today for the sake of the gospel. That's something to ponder about. Questions for you. What lessons can you and I learn from this account of the early leaders of the church? How do you think their example should shape our Christian work of today? Share your answers in the comment section below. That's our time in this video and we hope you were blessed by it. For more animated videos and inspiring stories, Subscribe to Inspiring Stories TV, give this video a thumbs up and share it to bless a friend. Thank you for watching and remain strong in the faith.